In this video, we will be multiplying mixed number fractions by integers. Here we have a fraction multiplied by a whole number. Then we have a mixed number fraction. We have a whole number and a fractional part. So we have three wholes and two thirds multiplied by four. Now the first thing we must do is we must convert our mixed number fraction into an improper fraction. If you can't remember how to do this, go back to the converting mixed number and improper fraction video. Now, for those of you that have remembered, we must start by looking at the denominator. I have a denominator of three and I have three holes. I have three lots of three. I know that three times three is nine. And I must remember to add the numerator. 9 add 2 is 11. I have a numerator of 11 and I keep my denominator the same, 3. And I multiply by 4. Now I want to express my whole number as a fraction. So I'm going to put 1 as the denominator. Now that I have two fractions, I can multiply them much easier. So I start with the numerator, 11 multiplied by 4, 44. And then the denominators, 3 multiplied by 1 is 3. 44 thirds. Now you will have noticed this is an improper fraction. I want to convert this fraction. So I need to ask myself, how many threes are there in 44? And you can do this by using the bus stop. 44 divided by 3. I know that there is one 3 in 4. And there is one remaining. Now I have the number 14. How many threes are there in 14? Well, there's 3, 6, 9 and 12. Now I stop there. That was 4. Now the difference between 12 and 14 is 2. So 14 remainder 2. So I know I have 14 holes and 2 thirds. OK, let's move on to another example. This time I have four wholes and three fifths multiplied by six. Now again, I'm going to begin by looking at my denominator. I have five. And I have four wholes. I have four lots of five, four groups of five. I know that four times five is 20. And I have to add the numerator. 20 add 3. I know that's 23. I have a numerator of 23 and you will have remembered the denominator stays the same and that's 5. And I'm multiplying by 6. Express your whole number as a fraction and now we can multiply them. If I start with the numerators again 23 times 6, that is 138. Now when you're dealing with trickier numbers, if you can't do them mentally because the numbers are too big, then you must use another method that you've practiced in maths in the past. A method that's quite quick and simple and that allows you to get on with the question quite quickly. And 5 times 1 is 5. Now again, I have an improper fraction because my numerator is larger than the denominator. It's more than one. I have 138 fifths. Now I need to know how many fives are in 138. And again, I'm going to use the bus stop method to help me get that answer. So I will put 138 inside my bus stop and 5 on the outside. 
How many fives are there in one? Well, I know that is zero. Move my one across. How many fives are there in 13? Five, 10, and I stop there. Two, the difference between 10 and 13 is three. 38 is the number that I now have. How many fives in 38? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and I stop there. That was 7, and I know I have a remainder. So I stopped at 35, 36, 37, 38, 3 remaining. So I know I have 27 holes and 3 fifths. On to another example. Okay, again, another mixed number fraction. This time I have five holes and four sixths and I'm multiplying it by three. So I start by looking at my denominator. This time it is six and I have five holes. I have five lots of six. 5 times 6 is 30, and I add my numerator, which is 4. 34 is my new numerator. 34, I keep my denominator as 6, and I'm multiplying by 3. I express my whole number as a fraction, and now I'm ready to multiply them. 34 multiplied by 3, 102, and 6 multiplied by 1 is 6. Now again, another improper fraction. I have 102 sixths. I need to know how many sixes there are in 102. I am going to use the bus stop method again to help me. So I've set out my bus stop method. I need to know how many sixes there are in one. And I know that is zero. Move my one across. How many sixes are there in ten? Six, and I pause there. There is one with seven, eight, nine, ten. Four remaining. I now have 42. I need to know how many sixes there are in 42. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. That is 7. And because 6 fitted into 42 exactly 7 times without any remainders, my answer is just 17, 17 holes. On to the final example. Now here you could pause and you could have a go at this one yourself and then come back when you are finished and you can compare your answers to my answers and see how you got on. Okay, let's have a look then. This time we have three holes and six sevenths multiplied by five. So if we start by looking at the denominator, I have a denominator of seven and I have three holes. I have three lots of seven. Three times seven is 21. And I add my numerator, which is six. 27 is my new numerator and I keep a denominator of seven. I'm multiplying by five, express my whole number as a fraction. 27 multiplied by five is 135. And seven multiplied by one is seven. I have a improper fraction I have 135 sevenths. I need to know how many sevens there are in 135. So 
So I'm going to use the bus stop method again. How many sevens in one? I know there aren't any sevens in one. So I move my one across. How many sevens are there in 13? Seven, and I pause there. There is one with eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, six remaining. How many sevens are there in 65? Let's do our sevens. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63. And we pause there. That was nine. Now I got to 63. And the difference between 63 and 65 is 64, 65, a remainder of two. So I have 19 holes and two sevenths. Okay, over to you. Here you are presented with a question. You have four calculations that you must solve in the same way that I have just shown you. So you have three holes and one third multiplied by four. You have three multiplied by four holes and one quarter. Now this is exactly the same. Don't let the fact that they have been switched around confuse you. The same method applies. The third one, two holes and two fifths multiplied by three. And the final one, two holes and three fifths multiplied by three. You must work them out. And hopefully if you've got them correct, you will be able to match them to the correct answer at the bottom. Now, if you find that you've got an answer that doesn't appear at the bottom, I would advise you go back and recalculate because it could be the case that you've got the answer wrong. Unpause the video when you think you have calculated those four questions. So let's see how you've got on. So there we are. Hopefully you managed to calculate those correctly. If there are anything that you are still finding tricky, go back, pause the video and practice some more. Hopefully this will help you with your next activity in your work pack.